just two forms of identity. Right? There are lots of different identities we have as human beings. Some of them are kind of tied intrinsically to us uh, and are important because they're, they're kind of a, a central part of us, like gender identity, family identity, if you're a, a father or a mother, uh, you'll have a, an identity as a fundraiser, you'll have an identity as a leader of an organisation. All of these are identities that we have. So there's kind of those intrinsic identities, and then there are identities that we have that are important to us only when other people we know share those identities. And this is where the sort of notion of social identity comes from. And I'm going to talk about one kind of intrinsic identity, and I'm going to talk about social identity. And I'm going to start by talking about this notion of social identity. Now, what we're talking about here, really, is am I likely to give you more as an organisation if other people I know also get some benefit from the organisation, or are also kind of enthusiastic about the work that this organisation is doing. And what I'm going to share with you is a couple of experiments that were conducted in the context of public radio in the United States. Public radio is a bit like the BBC, you get high quality news, good quality music, uh, but rather than it being funded through uh, a licence fee, it's paid for by individual donors. And what happens is that on air there's an appeal, people call in, uh, and they call into the station to make their gift in response to these on-air appeals. And we got to play uh, with some of the scripts uh, that, that people were exposed to, and we also got to do a survey of uh, some of these public radio donors. So if I want to know about the size of, and the kind of social networks that you have and relate them to giving, the easiest way of addressing that, frankly, is through a survey. And that's what we did. Um, and what we found was that the more people you know, broadly, who listen to this public radio station, the higher the gift is that you're likely to make. Uh, now, if you look at that graph, it's a bit of a messy graph, and it's not linear. Right? It kind of bounces around a bit, but you get the sense that there's some kind of relationship going on there. So, if I know more people who also listen to, if you want to broaden it from public radio, also benefit from the work of the organisation, Broadly speaking, I'm going to give you more, but it's not an easy relationship to use at the moment for fundraising. So what we might try and do perhaps is to nail down uh, some of the things that are a bit vague on this uh, graph. So what do we mean by acquaintances? Is that kind of co-workers, people we met at a conference, or is that people that we are very close to, like our family and our immediate friends? So if we want to tidy this up, maybe we tidy that up. Equally, is it listened to? benefit from the work of the organisation, or is it might listen to, because I live in the area, could listen to it, or again, if you want to broaden it out of public radio, might benefit from the work of the organisation. And of course that's easy to do um, to test. Uh, and let's look at the first one first. Let's tidy up this notion of acquaintances. I uh, hope you're taking notes because I'm going to do a short test for this presentation. What? Anyway, before this issue, you draw uh, any conclusions about giving. There are thousands of different variables that can impact on giving, right? So you have to chance those whenever you're trying to draw a conclusion about that variable. And actually, all that matters on this headline is it's family and friends that influence our behaviour, not casual acquaintances, co workers, people we met at a conference, and so on. Family and friends, we pay attention to, though, in our giving. So we tie that up that first part um, of that sentence. We now know it's family and friends, not that broader network. Uh, let's look in a bit more detail at people who benefit from the work of the organisation, people who might benefit from the work of the organisation. Public radio speak, listeners versus residents who could uh, listen to the public radio station. So what do we do? Well, we set up a telephone script where people would call in. Anytime you do experiments, you have to have a control group where they get nothing. So thanks for calling, how much would you like to contribute today, take the credit card information, good night, that's it. In the experimental condition, can I ask how many of your family and friends also listen to this public radio station? Or can I ask how many of your family and friends also live in this public radio area? How much would you like to contribute today? Better. What do we find? Well, we found that the average gift in the control condition, where they're not given any of that other information at all, uh, here is about $145, something like that. That's the black line in the middle of that graph. When you talk to people about how many other people you know who live in the area, 
could benefit from the work of the organisation, you're on that blue line. And you'll see that the blue line is pretty similar to the control group, and in fact, there's no real effect there at all. So knowing lots of other people who might benefit from the work of the organisation ain't going to impact on my giving behaviour. But look what happens to the average gift size when you start talking to people about other people they know who benefit from the work of the organisation, who listen to their local public radio station. Uh, and then you're on the red line. Now, that's good news because you can increase the level of the average